Hi, welcome to Paranormal Cativity. Today I have a very exciting video for you. I often get asked a lot of questions regarding spirit communication. And as you guys know from my videos, I do a lot of different things involving spirit communication or possible spirit communication, but most of the time my fallback is just talk out loud and kind of trust your intuition to see what you get kind of responses. For a lot of people that's not really very informative because they want something a little more concrete. Unfortunately, the paranormal field is not super concrete because we don't really fully understand it. That's why the unknown is the unknown. But one of my friends, Michael D. McGee, if you know of him, he's on YouTube and he's phenomenal. He is far more experienced with spirit communication attempts than I am. So we decided to collab. And so I asked him on my channel to go over some of my questions regarding spirit communication for you guys to try and get some feedback from him and see kind of what he's gone through that's worked and what hasn't for the most part. I sent over my questions and he pretty much did what he does in his weekly Q&A videos where he answers questions from his viewers. He just answered questions from me. So here is the clip from Michael. I asked him quite a few questions and he gave some really fantastic, very specific answers that hopefully will give you guys some guidance in your own spirit communication attempts. So take it away, Michael. Hey guys, my name is Michael McGee and I run the Michael D. McGee YouTube channel. And as original as that channel name is, the channel is dedicated really to my own personal paranormal experiences investigations, experiments, and just general evidence that I've collected over the years. As well as that, I do weekly Q&As just to discuss other topics within the paranormal field. Now, Kat's kindly agreed to do this collaboration with me and invited me over just to answer some questions about my own opinions and experiences in spirit communication. So with that said, guys, thank you so much for giving this a watch. And let's jump into the first question. What would you recommend for someone just starting out with paranormal research? Okay, so there are two main things that I want people to know before sort of jumping in both feet into paranormal investigating or actively going out and, and seeking spirits. And the first one is that the field as a whole is an unknown. Like you do your research, make sure you've got a background knowledge on it, but be aware that what you've read is still just somebody's opinions and theories. Like there is no way to 100% know what is on the other side. There are no experts. We won't know that until we pass on ourselves. And so in that, you've got to be aware that when you when you go out seeking spirits, you are not always 100% sure who it is that we're communicating with. And kind of in that vein, the second thing is just to be 100% sure that it's, it's what you want to do. Because I, I tell my subscribers all the time, if, if you decide to pick up a spirit box and invite spirits forward to come and talk to you, like I, I've always described it as like a door opened isn't always so easily closed. And by opening that up and saying, come forward, you're not really in control of who decides to come through that door. And you can't always just switch off the spirit box and that's it. Like you've asked them to come forward now, like there is always a chance that some could stick around. Obviously that's a worst case scenario, but I like to say that it's worth being aware of and being prepared for that eventuality if that's the route you decide to go. Not to put anybody off, because I, I do it myself, but it, it is just something to consider. Are there any resources you have found to work well consistently? One of the best bits of software I ever got for spirit communication was the Afterlight Box by Extreme Senses. If you just do a quick Google search of Afterlight Box, it's the top top of the list. You just go on there and download it. It's a spirit box app for Windows that, you, you know, if you've got a Windows tablet, phone, or, or a laptop, you just download it on there. It's completely free. It uses internet radio, sound banks. It's got echo, reverb, and it's even got its own ovulus type device called the Sanctus Talk. I downloaded it on a whim like over a year ago because I saw somebody using it on YouTube and I have had such good results from it. And the fact that it's free is just an absolute bonus. What are your favorite spirit communication methods? As you may have already figured out from my previous answers, I would definitely say that the spirit box is my personal favorite for spirit communication, specifically the radio based spirit boxes like the PSB7 or, or an app that uses internet radio. Like sound banks are great, but not all like spirit box creators actually publish what's in the sound bank. And so you can never be 100% sure that, you know what I mean? There's no funny coding involved. Like with a radio, you're getting truly random transmissions. Um, internet radio, maybe not so much, but with like something like the PSB7, you, you just, you can't go wrong. Now, obviously, as far as 
the best evidence goes, I would say something like an EVP because it's hard to dispute a voice that has literally just come out of thin air through an EVP. But I found personally that I get I get better results out of a spirit box, like more frequent results than I do through EVP. Have you ever tried something expecting it to probably not work and then found it worked well? I think the most surprising results that I ever caught were from an ITC experiment I did last year. And the experiment was based on the principle that in order to capture an EVP, a spirit needs to manipulate the audio white noise of the recorder to generate words. And so I, I was wondering, would it be possible to do the same thing, but with like visual white noise, like the kind of snowy static you get on old TV sets. And so I got a five inch analog TV and bear in mind, we switched over to digital in 2010. So this TV captures nothing but static. And I set it up on a desk, trained a camera on it and asked any spirits to come forward and, and try to show themselves. And you know, you record for three minutes and you go frame by frame to see if there was anything there. And it, it was genuinely a long shot. I didn't expect to capture anything. And then like the first place we didn't see anything. So I boosted the contrast and had another look and literally I think it was like three or four frames. Like it really wasn't very much, but a silhouette of a woman appeared in the static and it, ju it just blew me away because I'd been in contact recently with a spirit who, who claimed to have died in 1912. Her name was Anna. And I'd always imagined her just in that outfit. And so when I saw this silhouette appear on screen, like it just, it genuinely blew my mind. And I actually, I actually retried this experiment recently and caught like what looked like a face appearing in the white noise. Like it's, it's, it's really creepy, but it's, it's brilliant. Are there any methods of spirit communication you have tested that you weren't as impressed with? Oh, loads. I mean, I, I've tried so many spirit box apps in the past that I felt like just weren't giving me intelligent responses, especially not the kind that I've had through like the PSB 7 or the Afterlight box. They just felt like it was just spitting out random words like it was programmed to do that. Um, countless experiments. I mean, I tend to find that the majority of the time you'll try things and they just they just won't work out. But I think that's kind of part of the fun because like when when you finally do capture something, it, it just kind of makes it all the more special when you find something that is just really unusual and you can't explain it. Um, to name a few that I've tried, I mean, I've tried laying out Scrabble tiles, see if words can get spelled out, never, never moved an inch. Automatic writing, I have tried that now, never, never wrote anything that I thought was beyond just random babble from my hand. Um, I think the one that's been the most consistently disappointing has been the powder on the floor test where you you know you kind of spread baby powder and spirits are supposed to be able to leave hand and footprints and write in it and stuff and it, it just never caught anything i mean the best thing i caught was a few years ago where it looked like a breeze sort of like a waft of air just pushed a load of dust out and yeah it was unusual that the dust came out of nowhere but looking back on it now i'm just i'm very unimpressed by it like it, it could have been pretty much anything and that experiment no matter how many times i try it just consistently disappoints me how important is your relationship with what you are trying to speak to do you feel that the more time you spend with an entity the more comfortable it gets with you or do you think that the more experience you have with communication the better all the communication attempts will be that's a really good question. And to be honest, I think it's kind of a mixture of the two. I think it's part experience and part relationship and like the way, the manner in which you approach them. Like as far as I'm concerned, spirits were once living human beings and I don't see why just because they've passed away, you should treat them any different. Like I wouldn't walk into a, a room full of strangers and start abusing people and provoking them and expect them to divulge any kind of personal information. Like you've got to be respectful give them a chance to know that you don't mean them any harm and that they're safe in doing so and i think the same thing applies to spirits if you're going to visit a haunted location be respectful don't provoke them yeah you might capture some activity but it's just straight negative they're not going to be forthcoming with any information like it's going to stop there i think be respectful be polite and if possible like visit multiple times give them a chance to get comfortable with your presence and know that you're not just another investigator coming for for cheap thrills you know you're there for information and you're there to help i think i think that really does help and it, as far as like spirit communication goes ask for the same spirit multiple times like that's what i do personally when i aim like i do my communication sessions here is i try to ask for the same spirit multiple times to give them a chance to get to know me a little bit and like the more times we speak the bigger the rapport is and the better the relationship type deal i tend to find i get more information out of it that way now as far as experience goes as i was saying i think it's kind of like 
when you when you communicate, you open a door. And I think the more you do it, the wider that door gets. And I think that is recognizable on the other side. And from a more practical standpoint, I guess it's like doing an interview where you're asking somebody questions. The more you do it, the more natural you get at it. And so the people are more comfortable in your presence. And so that's it, guys. Thank you so much to Kat for having me on the channel and to you guys for bearing with me and listening to me waffle on. I really do appreciate it. I hope it was interesting. And if you do want to check out any of my other videos, there'll be a link in the description or you can search Michael Dean McGee at the top and my videos will be everywhere. So thanks again. And I look forward to reading the comments. Thank you so much, Michael, for all your amazing feedback. Now that I've heard of the Afterlight box and know kind of what it is and that it's a free download that's totally going on my laptop, I did want to say I totally am in agreement with you on a lot of what you said, but especially on evidence being pretty concrete when it comes to EVPs that are captured out of nowhere from no real white noise audio source other than just the recorder. I think that that's probably one of the most hardcore ways to say I caught something that has no logical answer so we have to go to the paranormal or the unknown spectrum of things to try and figure out what this is. Thank you so much for all of the detail in the last question that I sent over, the one that was more about experience versus building a rapport with a specific spirit or energy. I think that you do a really great job of doing that with your experiments. You tend to find a name or address something by the same name each time. And I think that really does build up that relationship some. And I think that's a really cool thing that I see you approach from a very sound point of view. And I like that a lot. Now when it comes to the question about having something that you tried randomly that you didn't expect to work, I had in mind whenever I went on my Revenant Acres investigation, I did a flashlight experiment, never expecting it to work. I'd just seen it on like Ghost Adventures or something, and it actually worked, and it worked really freaking well. So I kind of got the same vibe with your ITC experiments, but I wasn't 100% sure if that was something that you were familiar with before or if it was just something you tried. But the things that you've caught are really, really impressive, and I'm so glad that you included the clips, because if you hadn't, I was going to anyway. But is that not phenomenal? Like, it really makes me want to try it on my own as well, um, along with pretty much everything that you listed. I would love to get some more experience with trying different modes of capturing evidence, and if that's something you guys have an interest in seeing on my channel, please do let me know. I feel like with a lot of what Michael brings to his channel with the use of a lot of tools and the mission to capture evidence, I think his approach is really, really cool. So. I was really thankful that he wanted to collab on this and kind of give me some insights on his perspective on different modes of spirit communication. And on his channel, what I decided to do was to research ITC and the history of it and where it came from and all the different forms and fashions of it. Because honestly, at first I wasn't sure what ITC was. I saw the title in one of his videos and I watched it and I was blown away by the face. That was the first one that I had seen. And so I did a little research and it turns out ITC is pretty much any form of electronic communication. So all of us in this paranormal field are pretty familiar with it in one way or another. I just don't think we all knew exactly what to call it or how it really worked in relationship to each other. So that video is over on Michael's channel. If you wanna check it out, I learned a lot and hopefully I'll be able to inform you guys on some different things about it too because it was a really, really cool topic and I love diving into it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you again, Michael, for collaborating with me. I had a blast. I hope you did too. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing Michael on my channel. If you did, please let him know as well. Like he said, he's going to be checking the comments and I'm going to be checking comments on his video. So be sure to give us feedback on these because that would mean a lot. Be sure to check out his channel if you haven't before. Link is going to be in the description below. And be sure to check out the description on his video because I asked him to put a link in it and it's like the creepiest thing I've ever heard in my whole freaking life. So you guys have to go follow it and check it out because it's, it's audio clips that blew my mind. Another thing that's also in the description, at least of my video, probably not on his because it's a weird thing I do. Um, I had mystery links at the end of all of my videos and then when YouTube changed its end card format, I stopped. Well, I had a lot of people ask for me to bring it back, and so it's been in the description of like quite a few videos now, and I don't think people have caught on to the fact that it's back. So I did post on social media that it had been back in my descriptions, but if you guys were Mystery Link fans and you want to follow them, check out the description box, and then like quite a few of my 
recent videos because there's quite a few of them that I've posted that I'm not sure if you guys knew about. Uh, and mystery links are pretty much anything I find creepy or weird or random or spooky that I just want to share. So I hope you guys are excited about that. I am too. Speaking of these, if you want to give this video a thumbs up and let me know that you enjoyed it, that would be fantastic. If you haven't yet, please subscribe and turn on notifications. That way you get notified every time I upload. Thanks again for watching. I'm Kat, and that was Michael earlier. And thank you for watching Paranormal Captivity. Have a strange day.